Uh, so right now we just got back to uh, CH uh, Distillery uh, after a very, very, two large, very large meals. And uh, and these guys are laying down outlines. I might get up there in a little bit right now, just like enjoying the, the weather is like fucking perfect. The background, just gorgeous. Just chilling today, hanging out, smoking a little chronic, you know what I'm saying? Chilling, vacation. Enough painting, enough lollygagging, enough frolicking out in the sun with these bees. I don't know if you hold your breath, they don't bother you really. Let's go to Mitocaya, a Mexican restaurant that apparently has one of the best agua chile dishes that I'm ever gonna have. So we're in the Logan Square neighborhood. We're about to eat some bomb ass, award-winning Mexican food, um, regional to Chef Diana's um, upbringing and such and her family recipes. It's a baller menu. Oh my God. It's a force to be reckoned with, a lot of awards. It's gonna be a good meal, so I'm looking forward to it. We're gonna do the guacamole, the agua chile, uh, the picada, and then we're gonna do three fried oyster tacos, okay. steak burrito, a side of the, uh, the, the black beans. We're gonna do the spaghetti squash, mushroom mole, the braised chicken. And then the chuleta. I, I, kinda, I kinda feel like starting with the sangria. I think that's enough food, right? I, I mean, I'm gonna hit them all. Sure, right? You know. <laughs> yeah, that's my move. Cheers, boys. That's the sangria. Cheers. I went unequivocally to give it ample view. Oh my god. Oh, I have this tendency. It's good ass guacamole. Mm -hmm. see. No, I was gonna do the same thing. Mm. This combo? Uh, the one that he's drinking? Yeah. Sotol, prickly pear, lemongrass, lime, and oh, foaming yeah, bitters. Oh, and let it be known that uh, from season one, Alemi, I got them a reservation here when they were here for the James Beard Award. Huh. They had a lovely meal here. Met up with them, sent Hector a picture of all three of us. Right. It was awesome. So shout out to El Alem uh, Alemi. El Alemi, best El Paso restaurant, period. This is the fried oyster tacos. So they're on splitting tortillas. The oysters are from Walapa Bay. Awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna squeeze lime over all of it. Oh, dude, thank you. Line. Why, wait, why didn't you like put in your hand and like squeeze it the way that real chefs do it? You mean jerking off the air like that? Cut that out. We're not gonna leave, you're gonna cut that out. No, we're not, we're leaving that in. What What did they say about the, is, is Bro, is, you can't even tell that it's oyster. Yeah, I can smell it. Is the... <laughs> mm, I can smell it. <laughs> it's just not my thing, man. I don't know. So, oh, that's so, this, you, is, so this is Austin's. Oh yeah, that's all, dude. Austin, that is super you. That's all you. <laughs> I just want you to be happy, Austin. Hey, question. So the, the tortilla has a squid ink in it? Yeah, new squid ink tortilla. That's what I heard. All right. Here's our agua chile. Oh. We have leche de tigre. Oh. Sonoran white shrimp, chile piquín. Wow. Sweet potato sea urchin puree. Uh, and then some uh, crunchy corn that's on top. That looks incredible. Oh my God. Here. That looks amazing. Mm. And you know what it is? It's like an oyster po' boy, but in a taco form. Don't think you're wrong. Look, ba baby elotes, we got some cucumber, what it looks like. And then uh, shrimp. Sonoran shrimp. Oh. 
Peace. Look like Ray Charles playing the piano right now. <laughs> it is so fresh. And vibrant. Vibrant is the word that I was looking for. Yeah. In describing it. Would you say it's wildly different? It is so wildly different than what we've had up until this point. Um, it's special. You fucking dick. Oh my God, I'm so happy that you guys are allergic. <laughs> Mike's not allergic, he's just making excuses. I'm choosing my own path today, okay? Damn, Han Solo over here. Oh my so, God. Oh, that looks incredible. So on the very bottom is a corn tortilla. This is cheese tortilla. Then the nopal or cactus is salt cured and just tossed in there. The watermelon radish, red jalapeno, and lettuce are tossed in an avocado nopal salsa. It's a raw salsa. Gorgeous. Heat it the way that God intended it. And by God, I mean the chef. It's essentially a quesadilla with the freshest garden ever on top of it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah yes. Oh my God. That's the way. You did it the right so way. Here we have the picada. Now this will be on a masa criollo. You'll have the ancestral whipped beans with salsa verde, a little compressed asparagus, smoked trout roe, greenland mussels, and opal basil. That is what a gorgeous. beautiful dish. No, but look, this is this is a cool callback to episode three in Houston. This is a sope. Yeah. Uh, like I said before, it's a tortilla, but it's actually the masa that gets sort of created into this little dish or container that holds like this amazingness in it. Oh my God. So Hector, I can't believe how good this is. I'm not even lying about this. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna try it. So I got too much going on over here. Mmm. <laughs> this masa? It's not- My masa's is, fucking- Is it blue corn? What is it? It's blue corn. It's a blue corn or is it squid? Again. It's blue corn. Oh my God, that's the purest, most delectable, just insanity. Oh, how did my phone end up over there? That's how crazy this meal is. Smart dude. This is delicious. The fucking herbs. Our winners are long here, so we gotta take advantage of the summer I'm vegetables. Saying, do not try this at home. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a smart fucking dish. This is, really? This is my favorite so far, yeah. Yeah, this one's really, really good. The, mo mm. the, the mole, the mole uh, is it's, different than the one that I eat. It's so sweet. It's, the, the mole on this sets this thing the fuck off. Wow. The brown butter powder. How fire is that, huh? Yeah. Up here we have the cadaveres de pollo tatemadas. Oh my God. Uh, Holy. These are going to be uh, braised chicken thighs. will be braised in beer and salsa tatemada. Oh my God, it smells so good. Oh my God. Shit, I forgot about the steak burrito. Steak burrito here. Oh my good. God. The salsa mami on the side. These are a lot of salsa, so proceed with caution. And the beans. So the spiciness. It's spicy? Spiciness, yeah. What kind of what kind of peppers? It's chili de arbol. Okay. Oh my god, my yeah. Is it that good? Oh my god. Please allow me to share. Oosh. I'm about to try it right now. Am I fucking I did I fuck up by doing it? No. Oh my god. Those black beans are spice, you know? those black beans are pretty special. All right, and then chuleta de puerco. And this is going to be a 14 ounce bone in pork oh chop. Oh my god. In a tomatillo marrow salsa. Uh, on top, you're going to have some grilled radish, and we'll finish it off with molote. Any of this. Oh, 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 oh look at look at how juicy that is. Oh my god. So juicy.
Get out of here. Get out of here. What are we doing over here? Holy shit, that pork. Right? Yeah. I mean, honestly, everything is so incredible. Like, it's. That pork chop is incredible. That pork chop is unbelievable. Mm. I'd probably purge if I if it meant that I could make more room and try this thing all over again. I mean, this salsa should have been brought out from the fucking beginning as a dipping sauce also, but I do appreciate the fucking sense of surprise that I just received when that came out. Mm -hmm. Chile de Arbol is one of the main uh, uh, sauces that we make at my mom's house. So very familiar with it. This is wildly different. Sorry. <laughs> that is so good. It's encrusted with masa, like a masa dough, and stuffed with a uh, pork belly. No. Yeah. yeah. It's a submarine. Yeah. That pork is incredibly fucking well cooked. It's so fucking good. It's incredible. Don't do that to us. We like all of it. La salsa de chile de arbol is my favorite thing on this. It, it, you can. Put this on anything, it'll just elevate it to a, to heights unknown. Yeah, we, so we call that, so I call that salsa mami. Okay, hay un dicho este en México, verdad, que si algo te sale picoso es porque estás right. enojada, verdad? Yeah. Pues es para todas las madres que están encerradas ahí right. en la cocina right. que les salen este la salsa picosa. Yeah. So my, my mom would make this salsa all the time. Would, yeah, same. <laughs> Mexican traditions and sayings is that the the spicier the salsa is means the angrier the mom was in making it. The angrier you are, the hotter the peppers become. And I can tell you that this only means that my mom has been angry her entire life. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know why with a son like this. <laughs> exactly. Uh, everything's been fantastic, yeah. Chef. Jesus Christ. That squid ink taco is something special. It's so good, right? It's so yeah. fucking well, good. Well, that's my favorite thing about, like, I think, like, three things to be a good taco is a good tortilla, good meat, and good salsa, right? So, like, that's a really simple taco when you come, like, there's only three things, yeah. right? But then they're just, like, wildly different. Each thing is wildly different. Wildly, wildly different. different. See? Yeah. It's not just me. I, I said that all it's season chef, one. Chef oh, I kept really? saying wildly, wildly different. different. <laughs> Every fucking restaurant, I'm like, whoa, this is wildly different. <laughs> It's become like it a was though, game. but the thing is, yeah. like, you were saying it because it was. It really was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good, keep right. at it. Well, thank you. Oh, let me guess, you guys have bomb ass desserts here too. Uh, you know, we keep it really. They're, they're, we only have two. They are really good, but they're not like cartwheels. It's just like classic, really good. I'll be the judge. You may be a little bit jaded because they're yours. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want that weird crippled finger like yesterday. Nah, you want it. Just mimic. Why? Why? Why does, it, why does it have to be two fingers? Match why does it have to be two That's fingers? The optic Can it be all? No, it's not the optic handshake. Is this not the optic handshake? Give me the optic handshake. Put two fingers on top of mine. That's ill. Fucking hated every single part of that. Oh man, it moved me. <laughs> so <laughs> this is a flan cheesecake Finally, with pie said. crust uh, topping. Uh, looks like some uh, Granny Smith apples and sorghum syrup. Uh, and this is a tres leches uh, cake with a chocolate ganache and a chocolate uh, crust. crust or yeah, whatever it was called. Flan is <laughs> wonderful, especially after having the one that we had at, uh, at the birreria. So we're, we're battling here. What the fuck is going on? Pair so well with this apple cider. Oh my god. Come in with the milk. You know what the movie that's from? No, I don't care. That's so good, is there? <laughs> this one's the Tres Leches? Correct. It sucks, this bro. Like a flan? Dude, stop. What the fuck, man? It's it sucks, dude. Don't eat it. it Fucking buffoon. So <laughs> Are you
Are you fucking ready? I don't think they're ready because we have just arrived to the Maxwell Street Carnival Cana Market. Market Canals. Market, it's just the Market. Maxwell Street Market. Market. We're at the corner of Polk and Jefferson, but you gotta take a left here. Once you take a left here, you're gonna go into this like long street, right? A long street that it's just It's an open air market full of, uh, into, let's say, spirited independent vendors. Uh, they also have a lot of great uh, street food in there, uh, particularly tacos. Okay. I think we stop talking and we let's get going. Do we start at the beginning or do you want to start in the middle? We got We're already here. Let's go. Hey, Mike, real take quick. Take your time. Take your fucking time, Mike. Take what, your time. What, what, what now? Take your fucking time. Take my time. You guys take your time. The 5 a.m. is really creeping in. Yeah, dude. He smoked the joint. He's like, I'm so tired because of this joint. I'm like, no, it's because you had fucking three hours of sleep. All right, all right. All right. Uh, so we're about to go get some food real quick, some snacks, and then we're gonna get into some ramen today, possibly some sushi, uh, some wall painting, and how good was dinner last night at Mito I don't even wanna talk about Mito Kaya. Mito Kaya. Mito Kaya was delicious yesterday. I, I mean, I, I, I dreamt of that Tres Leches uh, cake that they gave us in the end. Uh, we had to double up on it, so, you know, barriguita llena, corazón contento. Yeah, ditto. Tres tacos al pastor. Uh, Ordeno con usted, eh? Sí. Okay, tres tacos al pastor, tres tacos de asada. Uh, a ver, oh, tacototes. Hello, hello. Yes. Orange de asada. Orange de asada. Thank you. Massive, probably. Here is three quesadillas. Three steak quesadillas. Papa massive. Three pastor quesadillas. Oh, tacos de pastor. Thank you so much. Enjoy. So we got the, the, the steak quesadillas, we got the pastor tacos, and they're mega. Look at the size of these things. Mega, mega tacos. And then we have the guarache. Guarache, again, it's one was saying it's a slipper, uh, but it's essentially just like a flat surface. Yeah. That's looking promising. Dude, look, look at the little crust on the La cascara or well, la costra, la costra de queso. All right, here we go. This is the guarache. Obviously, it's like, if, once you fold it into a taco, it's like massive. Massive. You're back home, baby. Close your eyes, imagine yourself being <laughs> back in Chicago at your favorite taco spot, and then open them, and then realize that you are. Cheers, bud. Cheers, blood. Cheers, chat. That is good, man. Fuck. That salsa is amazing. Yeah. I need to bite that. Guarache. Damn, there's like all kinds of shit on here, huh? It's everything. It's like a fully loaded taco, but I'll... Mmm. Mike, is this hitting the right way? I mean, obviously you had... Three hours of sleep. You were smashing coke with the fucking maracas in a in a in a, in, in a childcare property. Uh, the stories that you were posting, I, I was not jealous of. Right? I woke up at. at... Oh! Thank you. This is the consume. Uh, they just gave that to us for us to dip. No barbacoa. Oh shit! Let's open it. Yeah, open it up. How will it compare to the to the chiva that we ate yesterday? Oh. Chivo? Wow, look at that. Bro. <laughs> Holy shit. Mike, this is gonna bring you back to life. Yeah. He said, yeah. I know. I know. Mmm. 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 Wow. Mm. I would say this contends with any brick and mortar taco spot in the city. I peeled off uh, some tortillas, so I'm gonna eat this the way God intended it to. Ooh. Ah, hotter than F. Good work. Hey. Wow. It's hard to not eat like an asshole when the food's this good. Really, you know what I mean? You try, you try to get the restraint, you start dancing, and it makes you eat more. 
what what a treat to have not only the uh, the ambiance that we have right now, right? Obviously, you know, on the street eating uh, great, great food, homemade tortillas. You can never go wrong with homemade tortillas, in my opinion. The salsa was impeccable. City of Chicago in the background, just people waking up on a Sunday. You know, probably had a, say, the same bender that this fucking party animal did. That's just a hot dog. Which mic? You gotta try it's, this. It's simple. It's, it's simple. It's simple. It's veggies, fresh cut, everything's fresh. Grilled onions, you see, hot dogs, the bullets, everything. Oh my god, so good. Let's try that. This is a nasty style hot dog here at Nasty Style Hot Dogs. Uh, what's your name? Joe. Joe, thank you so much. What's, what's a nasty style hot dog? What's a different one? It's a, a nasty style hot dog is something, just something simple and easy. Ooh. A regular Chicago style hot dog is relish, cucumber, uh, relish, dried pickle, onion, sport pepper, tomato, celery salt. My twist is a fresh cucumber, celery salt on it, with a little bit of uh, lime, and then with everything on it, including the grilled onions and the serrano pepper. I have sport peppers that goes on a regular hot dog, but I uh, like making it this way. Yeah. This is nasty stuff. This is nasty stuff, but it's not nasty at all. <laughs> Cucumber, I don't know, man. Oh, yeah? Mm. It's better. Don't you like the crunch of it? I, I'm going to find out right now. Oh, I'm going to try. I could do five of these right now. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. That beef hot dog? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, you, honestly, this is a really good spin on a dog. Yeah. So good, yeah. man. So good. Thank you. Yeah, that is incredible. I'm honestly, I'm really glad that you stopped here. Yeah, I could. You know me, man. I'm the glizzy gobbler. I'm not. People don't, people don't realize that no. You get a car that you love. It's like I got something yeah. small. They're like, ah. Oh. But when they try it, they come back and come back and come back. When you said best hot dog you've had, I'm like, ah, I've had millions of hot dogs. That is in my top two. Really, my guy. And I've had a lot of them. So much so that going forward in my in my household, I'm gonna do the Joe Nasty style special and I'm gonna buy a cucumber just specifically to put it on the side. I'm gonna blow people's fucking minds out there. It's an idea. So good. It's, it's what a idea. what an add, an add-on. So now that we've had that incredible assortment of just deliciousness. We're gonna go finish off the walls, or we, we're, they're gonna go finish two walls. I'm gonna try to finish one and maybe do another one. I don't know what it is, but uh, immediately after that, we're gonna get some great pho. Ramen. Ramen, some great ramen. I personally am telling you right now, I don't think that I can stuff my face anything with anything more, but I literally just came off saying that I could eat three more of those uh, wild style hot dogs. Nasty style. nasty style hot dogs. Those nasty style hot dogs, <laughs> fucking incredible. Wild Let's get style. into the car, you're following us. We're kind of finishing up on our second piece. We're about to take a little breather and then come back to this after we get some ramen from Monster. It's a fairly new spot in, uh, in Chicago that's been getting a lot of, uh, a lot of good raves. Um, excited to eat some soup after all the uh, other things we've been consuming. I think a nice bowl of rich, hearty broth sounds kind of, kind of great for a day like this. Yeah, that's Detroit. So. We're over here in the humble park neighborhood of Chicago, which is kind of the northwest side of the city. We're sitting here at Monster Ramen. 
The spot's been uh, getting a lot of rave reviews. It's very new. The chef started at Strings Ramen, which is another chain restaurant here in Chicago, and started branching on her own. Started doing a lot of interesting things with ramen, doing an omakase ramen uh, dinner type thing, collaborating with other restaurants. Uh, so we're here to check out uh, what's good with ramen in Chicago. I'm Katie. We're at Monster Ramen Chicago. And how long have you guys been open for? Uh, we just passed our one year. So really? it's uh, four, uh, 14 months. Wow. Yeah, that's our 14 months. Time is flying. Holy <laughs> shit. Yes. <laughs> Well, open a ramen shop is always my dream. Um, I grew up um, eating a lot of beef noodle soup when I was in China. I was born in China. Mm -hmm. So eating beef noodle soup was uh, one of my uh, daily uh, stable. Um, so opening a beef noodle shop was uh, it's, uh, more like a dream come true. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and also I'm a noodle there. I love to play with noodles. Um, that's why we import this machine here to make our own noodles, um, and also we make our own stock. I just think it's uh, it's just it's a great thing to make our own broth and the noodles oh, in this absolutely. house, including our uh, protein toppings like the root rolls and the chashu. I just think it, it, it just makes me happy. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, yes. Oh my God, yes. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Fire? And with ramen, it's okay to slurp. It's, you, gotta cool, you gotta cool the... Uh... It's perfectly fine to slurp. God, the, the texture of the noodles are phenomenal. Shit is hot as fuck. Mm. This is our Wagyu noodles. Let me put some of this... Uh, these uh, chives. I think we got it right here. It's all about the broth. The bro broth's in there. Is that ground beef? I think it's ground pork, maybe. Oh my fucking god. Yeah. I'm here for all the scallions. Oh my god. Oh, but do you feel the texture of the noodles? Like the noodle texture. I, dude, I feel it. I, dude, I feel it all and all over my body. In unison. I wanna try this uh this egg. We said we weren't gonna fucking eat, and here we are. I know, I know. I'm going in, dude. Man, I don't oh my, it's, fuck. it's 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 uh it's life changing for me. I've I've never had proper ramen like proper that. Proper ramen like that. Yeah. Son of a bitch. So the monster ramen that we're trying. So this is the monster bowl of ramen, their in-house special. This is the shoyu, which is a soy, soy sauce based broth. Uh, this one, you can see the color difference, the clarity. You see all the, you see that this is a little creamy and white. This is all the marrow from the pork bones, the chicken bones, the beef bones, the combination of everything to create like the sticky collagen um, filled, filled broth. Whereas this one, it's more of a dashi based, meaning it's a little, they use uh, smoked, um, they use smoked shaved uh, tuna essentially, like dried tuna and kombu and soy sauce. They do all the dressing as it, as it goes. Is it chicken based? Okay, so it's chicken based. Chicken, chicken marrow. I am very happy. You know, sometimes like when you're stoned, and you take your sunglasses off and everything's like so vibrant. Mm -hmm. Like everything's just like H super HD, everything yeah. like you. That's how it felt to put this in my mouth. Like it felt like an HD experience of just understanding almost to a science why all of these flavors fit together with the textures and how they all interact once you start chewing on that. I think I may be like super spoiled now that I've like my first true ramen experience was here in Chicago and it's such a great place as Monster Ramen is at the corner of Fullerton and Bernard or St. Louis, somewhere around there, you can look it up. Uh, delicious, would 1000% smash 
again and again. Uh, I, next time I will, I, I could, I could finish one of those big bowls. Oh, it, if I wasn't, if we didn't have, if I wasn't as disciplined as I was. see which one I want this one ah I cannot believe you're grabbing it like that without using sanitizer that's right there beef jardinera all the proper accoutrements that you would want to put in a pizza in order to have the experience that I'm about to have just now right now mmm shit is fucking gas mmm Mm. Gravity wasn't doing its fucking portion of the job right there. Dude, it is so phenomenally fire. If you ever have a chance, and this might not make it into the thing, but I'm gonna talk it into the thing anyway. Uh, Van Neistat has this thing called the artist resentment. And he talks about having the idea of, go uh, the idea of creating something and then hitting the, the wall. Everybody hits the wall. Uh, whether you're eating, you hit a wall, you can't eat, the same wall, same, same thing with creative, right? You, you get there and some people break through. And when you have that breakthrough, you start to get like, oh, okay, boom. I think okay, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go through with it because you know, part of being an artist is having fun doing what it is that you do. But uh, the artist's resentment comes when you don't go through that wall and then you abandon your project. I've done that throughout my entire life when it comes to art, uh, especially on walls. I, like, I just abandon it. I just, I'm just like, you know what? I'm just gonna fucking finish it and say it's done. Uh, whether or not I'm happy with it. Uh, but there's no reward in that. Uh, that's where you stop. So you have the resentment of the wall, you have the resentment of the process, and then you have the resentment of even having the idea of starting something like this. You just say, here I am again. I should just not even bothered. Now I have to fucking finish. Um, and then there's the, uh, the, the the real artists, right? like the wand and the revise where, uh, the, the wands and the, and the mics where, they just are gonna go through with it no matter what. And maybe they have a moment of, uh, of, of like hitting a wall. I don't know. It doesn't seem, it doesn't happen to them as often as it happens to me. Doesn't mean look at that shit. 